the Lost Cryptids Conservatory, where we will shatter your reality to bring you closer to the truth. show today we have a uh, amazing guest we have c wayne wilson himself uh you guys might know him from uh his bigfoot research and also uh the movie documentary he started in is uh my journey with monsters uh how you doing today uh c wayne well, I'm good. all right all right so uh well let's jump right into it uh what what got you started on your journey with monsters? What was your first encounter, and how did this journey begin? Well, I mean, what's what it starts what it starts like is coming home one night, and it had been snowing. We had just gotten back home, and we find this huge X had been placed outside, clear as day, where we could see it. And uh, at first, I'm like. My daughter's running in saying a Bigfoot's been here because, you know, she, we watch mountain monsters. So we kind of recognize that type of structure. I wasn't into Bigfoot at that time, to be honest. So I told my daughter, I said, hey, if something's been here, there's got to be footprints around here. And I said, so once the snow melts, we can find them. So a few days later, I'll go back out there and I find a 22 inch track. And then I'll start real, trying to figure out, you know, who left this? It had to be something really big that left it. So I start putting uh, I start putting trail cams up, and one day I come home and on the trail cam, it looks as if I had a trail cam sitting on my grill. It wasn't bolted down to nothing. Something jumped on the porch, and bam! I mean, that was the freaking clearest. We got it either his hip or his shoulder, but it's the clearest shot of us of something really big and black that jumped on the deck and it was no bear. So, um, and then I'm really intrigued, you know? So then I'll start, you know, I start realizing, wait a minute, they're across the road. Cause I kept my trail cam pictures just kept picking up things. I mean, way, way across the road. And I'm like, what is over there so big that it's triggering these trail cams. And, um, so then I said, well, I'll go get a camcorder and I'll try it in. So, but before the camp quarter, you know, I'm out there one day and I'm, I'm out there. I didn't took the trail cams down. They weren't doing any good. So I'm out there one day and I'm looking for footprints. It looked like there was some at this tree and this overwhelming feeling came over me. And I turned around and looked and there was a 15 to 16 foot giant standing across the road looking right at me. And I mean, this sucker, I mean, was huge. I mean, that's what they call the Bigfoot. So I, I call them the alpha males because the alpha males are the ones that really get tall and giant size. Um, most of them are six to eight feet tall. Most of them don't get over 10, you know, but there is the, what you call the alphas. He he saw me and that's the first time I ever saw one. And honestly, I turned and looked at him and I wasn't even a scare, you know, but, but then we get, oh, well, then we get, uh, after I get the camcorder, I start getting frustrated because I can't get them on camera. And then one day out of the blue, there's one right on the camera looking at me with a bag of freaking, uh, it looked like he had a bag of fast food in his hand. 
And he was up in a tree, and he looked. This one looked more like an eight. I mean, it, it, he he didn't really have, but I knew it was a Sasquatch. But I didn't I didn't know, you know, because there's different types of them. You know, he didn't look like the one I saw. But it was then after that I realized where they all were. They were they were across the road, and every morning where I lived at, I could just look across the road and see them. I mean. I mean, it was so crazy, the stuff I kept seeing down there. I mean, one time I thought they were down there killing something, and I, I tried to get my get my um, cell phone far enough where I could record it, come to find out it was, they weren't killing anything. It was a red Bigfoot down there mating with a, a black Bigfoot, and I oh, thought they were killing it, and then I got a better look, and I said, wait a minute, they, they're down there having sex. They were in turn trying to kill each other, and – uh but boy, the stuff, I mean, then they, like I said, then, then comes, you know, that when they start, every time I go outside, I get the whistles. I mean, they'd whistle at me. I whistle back and they'd whistle back at me, but then I would, I would see them run by me at night. I feel them running by me. I didn't see them, but then when I was, I was recording a video and then people on Facebook come back and said, you need to watch, rewatch that video because something did run by you. And if you slow it down, you see it. And I went back. I said, "Wow!" And then that's like I was telling you earlier about the about how they would test me and stuff, and they would test me and they would try to scare me, and um, they was wanting to test me to see if I could be, you know, one of, or, you know, one of one of the what I call the light workers that they try to they try to find, you know. And that's what that's kind of what it was, you know. See, what it was was I was down shoot. I was down the lowest part of my life in 2015. I mean, I've been told my legs wouldn't, I've been told my, both my knees were deteriorating. I was going to be in a wheelchair in two years. Now I'm out there every day. Now I, I, I go off all that medicine that, I mean, they were giving me medicine for everything. I mean, mental stuff. I started forgetting how to get home. I started losing, having memory loss and, blood in my darn every time i look in the toilet there'd be blood and now I, I said that was side effects for some kind of uh arthritis medicine so i just uh, one day i cut all of it out i took and cut all of it out except vitamin d and um i cut it all out and then i started looking at a new way to heal and in, in the process of doing that i'm out there every day now i'm 350 pounds right now that's the heaviest i've ever been and I'm out there every day with that looking with that cell phone or the, with that camcorder every day going backwards and forwards and I'm losing weight when I'm doing it. So I start thinking to myself, and this just came to me about a month ago. Were they there to help me get healed? Did they help heal me? Cause I mean, it's been eight years since that and I'm still walking around. I'm still doing things I shouldn't be doing. You know, I'm not in a wheelchair and it, it, it makes you wonder did the Sasquatch heal me or was it something to do with God? And I really believe it's both. I believe it was both. And uh, then, like I said, you know, but it was one time. I mean, this was before the trust comes in. I go across the road. I get mad at them because they weren't giving me nothing. I didn't see none of them. So I got mad at them. I went over and got as close as I could to them and was filming a bunch of them. And then when I came home, I looked at my footage and, well, I, I, at the time, I didn't think it was nothing in it. You know, later on down, about a couple years later, I went through it and I said, what? There was something there. But there wasn't nothing there when I saw it. So about 5 o'clock in the morning, um, I'm asleep and all of a sudden something comes up to my bedroom window. Now, my bedroom window was up a good 10, 15 feet high. Whatever this was, was looking right in it. And he was shaking it. And he let out the loudest. He went, Rrr! I mean, as loud as you, and you think I'd be, you think I'd be scared. Me and my crazy self, I got up with my cell phone, was trying to take a picture of the fool. I wasn't scared of him. I was just trying to get his That's picture. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I not scared? You know, you know, and, uh, but, but after that, you know, after that, they, um, after that, I, and people give me, they always ask me, why don't you stay on them longer than you do? Why you only film to a, a minute or two of them? I said, because of that reason alone, you get too close to them, they're going to come pay you a visit. 
And I don't think if I'd have tried it again, what would have happened? I think they would have probably ripped my head off. So I knew not to go back over there. And, um, right. and, uh, but that was the big guy. I mean, and then the next time I did something wrong, it was him and even, I've never seen nothing that was this big. This, this looked like one, you know how we found all these, how you see these shows with all these ginormous human skulls and these big bodies. And you wonder where these things came from. There was actually one of them there and he was with that Bigfoot and that sucker could have been 30 feet tall. I mean, he was looking over top of my daggum double wide, looking down in the window at me. And, I've, and then I've noticed uh, later on down the road, if you've seen the Bigfoot across the road, a lot of times that big guy would be with him. So I think there may be still giants walking around this earth too, but I think they done yeah, figured out the same the, abilities as Sasquatch, you know? That brings some uh, good questions up and stuff. And I sure. guess we'll get into that right now. Uh, first one we got from uh, Scott is, uh, where are you, what state do you, uh, did all this happen in? North Carolina. The uh, upper part of North Carolina too, not not the it be be the the northern part. And uh, I seen that picture you're talking about uh, of the thing really close on your deck. You said uh, that's what I was trying to look for earlier. I'm gonna try to look for that again real quick. Uh, but we got some pictures and stuff to uh, to show also. Um, so yeah, the giants. You know, you're saying it's 30 feet, and uh, there are stories of these giants from Native Americans that seem to be a different species or whatever than uh sasquatch in fact they did not have yeah they definitely are i mean even they, even uh i'd say dog man's more related to sasquatch than than this thing was but but um and that's another thing i mean i mean i mean in the beginning when i didn't know what i was dealing with i'm outside i mean this is I'm outside taking pictures with my point and shoot and I'm trying to take pictures in the woods and I see something in the woods with these big long fangs. And I mean, it, I, I thought it was a freaking demon. I mean, it had these big long fangs, these pointy ears. And I didn't know at the time what it was, you know, I, I didn't know what a dog man was then, you know, I, I was just learning this stuff, you know? And, um, that thing looked at me and I and I said, "Get out of my woods, you demon!" And then I walked away, and a lightning bolt flew out by my head and hit the fence. And I mean, and when you hear that story and nobody believes it, well, I got the picture to prove it. <laughs> I actually got the picture of the lightning bolt that came by my head, you know, and it hit the fence. Now there was no storm in that area, and what? Where did this energy come from outside inside the woods? I mean, it comes straight out of the woods by my head. Right. And that brings a lot of more questions up that we'll yeah. get into answer. But I'll, I'll throw it out there right now. You don't have to answer it now. Was, uh, some people think that these could be like the Nephilim or they are demon spawn, uh, leftover remnants of these of monsters and stuff, and that they're you know trying to deceive us and stuff. Uh, but before we get into that question, why don't you get into some of the uh, mind seek and stuff that was happening to you? So they first, like I said, it, it, something happened. Something happened really crazy. I would start filming something up the road, and these things didn't look normal. These things had like torn clothes on. One of them had a, like an alligator hat. I mean, wasn't no, it was actually an alligator on top of his head. It was one that looked, so, I mean, disgustingly obese. I mean, but they didn't look human, and. I'm out there, and, and at this point, all the Bigfoots know, and I always go out there and say hey to them. They say, they're start, all of them out of the woods are yelling at me, hey, 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 and I'm filming these things. And then then all of a sudden, an orb comes in front of my camera and tries to block me from filming them. And so I was thinking they don't want me filming them for some reason. So the next day, well, the next night, I look outside, and there's a big, Seven, eight foot tall naked lady standing in my darn yard looking backwards and forwards just like this. I mean, backwards and forwards. And then I start looking and I see more of them. They're all lined around my house. I mean, they were lined all at every spot in front of my bedroom, but around my house and every little corner they were lined up around. You know what my theory is? I was dealing with skinwalkers. 
And I believe they they didn't want them, they they had to come in those woods and protect me and keep some things from getting in my house. And um, um, so after that, you know, it goes on for about a week. You know, you see the female, and then I notice the big guys in the woods now. Now the big guy hasn't been in my woods. He's only been across the road. Now he's in my woods. So that night. That night, um, he comes to me and tells me who he is. I mean, I, wait, I hear him in my head. I hear him in my head. And then the next thing I know, I'm seeing he's taking me somewhere and he's showing me their planet, which was a, a red version of ours, which I think probably was Mars. You know, I think we all came from up there, if you want to know the truth about it. Um, but but um he shows me this and tells me, but I freak out. I think he's taking me to hell because that's the first time I ever had anything like that happen. So I black, I get out of it. But but he tells me this. He says, he says, um, we're just like you all. We have the same DNA and everything. And then he says, um, I think I I forget what how they say. It. Yeah, this is how he says. He says. We walk in the same realm as ghosts. Now, he says realm. Who calls it realm anymore? But he says we walk in the same realm as ghosts. The only difference is we can come out and they can't. So that just that shows you um, when you talk about how they can just be be there and then be gone. They can. I think I've heard, I'm not 100% sure, but I've heard they can be in three dimensions all at once. You could be seeing them out there in the rain and then they could be two other places at the same time. And now you wonder why there's no bodies. I mean, that's why they probably got them stored somewhere. Um, they did show me a place in one of those visions. They took me to a place where it was all green. It had all these heads of Sasquatches around, but evidently that's where they bury their dead. And I don't know if there is a place in, I forget where the lady showed me, but it's a so there may be a planet where they actually you know bury their dead they just nobody knows it but but then it was like they telling me they're telling me um i get i'll get woke up again i get i get told all these different things one time i i asked them i said why does dog man always lay at the end of the woods and the answer i got back was he protects the he protects the um what is it called what is it called oh yeah the portal he protects the portal the po evidently the portal they come in that they can come in and out of if somebody ain't there protecting it then they can let out every kind of demon you could think of and uh so he, the dog man has to stay around and protect it kind of like anubis you know protected the underworld and it all, if you think about it, it all ties up to back to back to old ancient Egypt. Everything, I mean, everything I've been learning, you know, um, that's why I'm fascinated about Egypt for some reason. I just am fascinated about you know, everything about it. And then you start finding out that there's pyramids and stuff everywhere. They're not just in Egypt. They're everywhere. And yeah, true. so, I mean, it makes you wonder, you know, you know like I was telling my, tell, tell them, telling somebody today, I said, I said, when you finally realize we've been lied to our whole lives, lied to in school, lied to everywhere, and you start waking up and realizing it, I mean, no telling what's out there right now that we don't know. Me, me and uh, Stacy Brown both come up with an interesting theory. You know, all the, like the Loch Ness Monster, while some people see it and then they can't find it, maybe it's coming through a portal. And sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. It goes back into that portal. And and if the theory goes around that Alistair Crowley's the one that when he left, he left all those portals open. So, you know, I want to go there so bad. You just don't know. I just love to go down there and see what comes out, you know, you know, but but I didn't experience so much with these things. I mean, so uh, let's raise that question again. Since, uh, sure. You brought that that man into the subject. Uh that people think that these are demons or uh, Nephilim, which would be uh, flesh and blood versions uh, that maybe have these abilities. Uh, they were talked about in ancient times, of course. And now the story of Alice, Alistair Crawley, of course, he was a uh, uh, really evil man. I mean, truly, truly evil man that did a lot of evil stuff. And 
actual rituals and uh, yeah. and had a place on the lock. So uh, if it did come through a portal and he did make the Loch Ness monster, that would uh, he was trying to summon demons and stuff. So do you think these creatures are demonic in some sort of sense? Um, well, they have these abilities, you know, they are communicating, you know, uh, if it's trying to trick you and deceive you and take you away from Christ, you know, that try to shift your attention and focus on them. And Well, not the Sasquatch. I, the Sasquatch remind me, they remind me of old ancient Indians. That's the way they act. And everything about them is, is something about God about them. I mean, it's so weird how I changed. I mean, after, after everything I went through with them, you know, it got to the point where I didn't have no need to go look for them anymore. You know, they'd just be there if I wanted to see them. You know, I can just, I can go out there right now and probably see, you know, but I mean, here now I hear them all the time yelling. It's either them or some dog man back there. So, but I'm glad to be back in the country because then I get to experience that stuff again. I, see, I was in the city for like four years after all that stuff had happened at, at that place. I had to move. So I moved to the city and that's when I discovered that trail, you know, and here's the weird part. I kept getting this feeling that that's where they were, that I needed to go to that trail to see. And the stuff I pulled off of that trail, I mean, where I used to live, I believe, and I still believe it's there. I believe it's a Bigfoot habitat. I believe they all breed there. That land has never been developed. That Nobody's ever lived on it. Um, I've seen UFOs land down in the back of it. I mean, it's just like a perfect place. If you want to you wanna be a cryptid or whatever, or you can hide right in there, and nobody would ever know, you know, except for me because I knew they were there. I figured it out, you know, it didn't take much, you know, when you start looking at them trail cam pictures and then you start thinking they're, they're over there. I mean, they, they have to be across the road because every trail cam picture I had, and I'm talking about 2000, I get up and I have 2000 pictures and I'm like, what in the world is triggering it so much? And every shot was across the road and that thing didn't pick up at a hundred feet, but every shot I was getting was across the road. So I start looking across the road, and then that's when I figured out that's where they were. And I guess here before before I moved though, um, before I moved though, you know, I knew they were there. I mean, I mean, I knew they were still there. I didn't think they would follow me into town. But then I wake up one morning, uh, probably a couple years after I've been living there. I wake up one morning, and one standing right in my freaking bedroom. And as soon as I went to grab my camera, he disappeared. And I was like, I didn't think they could come in the freaking house like that. But that, I, I'm leave, you know, like I said, they showed me how they can walk through walls. But how in the world did they come through town and, and not get picked up by somebody walking those streets? Because bums were walking those streets all during the night. But yet nobody saw nothing. And they, even if they did, I don't think they would say anything, you know, right. but um. There's actually reports of uh, cryptids in uh, big cities at nighttime. In fact, uh, a little shout out to uh, Don Peak and his uh, Don Peak's Wilderness Adventure Group. Uh, they did a uh, night investigation. They actually had something that they seen uh, jump, a human form jump a seven foot fence in front of them and had a little activity from uh, the government. Well, my fence out there I got right now. Um... If they had my dogs, I, I had put it up, and it was bent down. And that thing's like six, seven feet tall. So that I knew it, it was either – I don't think a deer would have did it or it got caught in the fence. So what jumped over and bent that fence down like that? And what it was is I had a tomato plant out there, and somebody stole the tomatoes. I bet you that's what, what – I bet you anything that's what happened. Oh, I'm gonna listen. I got apple trees. I got two, three apple trees out there right now that, that I planted since I moved. But it'll be a couple years before they start producing peach trees to blackberry bushes. I mean, I mean, I'm just asking for them to come up here. <laughs> and right. I, I mean, and my thing is, if I've got plenty, I don't care if they come up here and take the apples and stuff because I'll have plenty, you know. But but it's uh, it's kind of kind of the way when I got my own place. Now we own our own place out in the country, and and I can do what I want to out here. And I'm all, I'm going when the when my weeping willows get tall. I planted two weeping willows way down in the 
down in the land. And when they get tall, I'm going to put a fire pit down there. And I'm going to sit down there at the edge of the woods. That's where everything's going to be. And I'm hoping they're going to come out to us, you know, you know, but, but it, that's going to be a while because some trees, I mean, they're growing like crazy, but I need them. I want it to look like the whole swamps of Louisiana and just be sitting down there under a fire pit and just sitting down there, just walk, talking and looking, you know, and I bet you anything, I'll get their attention. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, sounds, sounds like a great Yeah, thing. it's, it's, see, I done done so much that, it's like I tell people, I done been to Bigfoot school. I done graduated. I don't need to know no more than what I know. But don't get me wrong. I don't know no more than everybody else. I know a lot, but I don't know. There's still that one question, you know, you know, when's one of them ever going to come out? You know, I mean, I've even had one. I mean, now you tell me what would you do? I mean, I was out there one day. I was out there one day with a camcorder and something stomping through the woods. I mean, he is stomping hard. I mean, the ground's shaking. That's how hard he's stomping, and he's and he's he's doing this. He's going, oh, oh, and he's and he's stomping at the same time. He's doing this coming toward me. I mean, you think anybody else would have peed their pants? I mean, he got right next to me. I felt him, and I, he got right next to me. And you know what I did? I put my camera down and said, "Thank you." I mean, why would I do that? Why would I turn the camera up and get the money shot? Why would I just, I'll tell you why. I never heard them stomp on the ground and walk like that. I got to hear it, and it was so impressive that I just told him thank you because I was so impressed by it, you know. But, uh, but. That's uh, an excellent approach to have, too. You know, you kind of maybe show him a little bit of respect, and uh, it's different. It's not a typical response that a human would do in that situation, and, uh. I think they pick up on well, that. Well, it's very curious. Yeah, well, it's like it's like this: when you walk into a set of woods, you, the first thing you don't do is start putting cameras in there. The first thing you do is walk in the woods and say, "I know you're here. This is my name, and I'm I mean you no know, harm." If you do that, then odds are they're not going to mess with you. They're gonna they're gonna be curious, but they're not going to mess with you. You know, there's too many people out there doing it wrong. I mean, they need to understand, treat them like people. You know, you treat them like people. I would be so mad if, if the government come around and said they're real and then you can go hunt them. I'd be so mad because you basically killed another person. Because just because they can disappear. I mean, look at, look, at, I'll give you an example. Look at a snake. Look how a snake can blend into leaves and stuff and you'll never know it's there. I mean, they have that same ability. I watched them. I filmed one one time where, here was his face, this big old gorilla-like face, and I'm right on it, and I'm right on it. And I tell him, I was like, he get about a minute or two in, it, he gets he gets frustrated because he don't want me filming him. I said, oh, he's gonna he's gonna cloak, and I watched his whole face just disappear. I mean, he started just crumbling, and what it was is he was backing up. He was backing up, and as he was backing up, he was doing some type of cloaking for him as he was backing up, and. I tell anybody, and when you see that or you see that silhouette run by, all you can think of is predator. And you think, where did they get the idea for the predator? I think if, I think somebody's had some interaction with Bigfoot, and they've yeah. seen how fast they can run and how they can just turn into a silhouette if they want to. I've even got a picture of one, man, where I, I was taking these still shots left and right, and this and one had – I guess he tried to run by, and I all I got is his darn up. I mean, a part of his face and his teeth. I mean, that's how fast he was going. But I actually got the picture, and I mean, but it's like it's like not him. It's like part of him. You know how you see these? Uh, what is it called? Um, I've seen them on TV and stuff where where you see somebody running in slow motion, and you see or, their body coming apart, or or their body. Um, going so fast it just looks like it's their teeth you know and that's what it was and then then when i'm at that trail i'm out there one day and i look down and there's one that just come by me look like a silhouette and i didn't even think about filming it i just saw it and i was like good day they are like predator (laughs) and you see that i mean and yeah they got like i said they got um what they got is abilities from thousands of years and they just honed them and they made them made them theirs and 
according to what they tell me, we all have those abilities locked in our DNA. And, and I've heard, I've, I've heard in my, my, I think the way I understand it is when the world goes to crap and there's no more government, there's no more people, that's when you're going to see them come out. And that's why they, they train me because they want people like me to get the message out and, and, and continually get the message out. Even if the light and love and the light, light and the love they actually used to, when I used to go live on Facebook, they would come out, they would inter, they would try to interrupt it. I mean, we'd have all this digital breakup. Now, I've never been been live on Facebook where I've actually had digital breakup on it. I mean, this was like interference coming from something. Then one day somebody was able to decipher what it was, and they said it was love is light, light is love. And that came from, that came from them. So... You know, and then you start thinking about it. I mean, look at me. I'm one of the, I'm trying to, I actually one of the goodest people you can meet. And why am I so happy? And why am I always such in a good mood? And it's because of whatever happened, you know, the change they made. Somebody was telling me that they may have messed with my brain and maybe it may have bumped my brain up to the little bit level because um, we, we do. I think we do address that in the journey with monsters about how certain people, certain people are evolved more than other people. Say, say people when people see three and four D, that's what they see with their eyes. And then people, when you get up into the four and five, you start seeing these things. You can see them everywhere. Um, when you get into the level where I think I'm at right now, I mean, I would think. I would think that might be why I evolved like I did, and now I'm such a peaceful, God-loving person, you know? It, something, hap something happened. I mean, I don't care about nothing no more. I mean, all I care about is being happy and making people happy. That's why I do them funny videos on, on I post on Facebook a lot of times. I just do it to make people happy. I don't try to, you know, I ain't trying to be no ego-driven like some people say, oh, he's doing that to get attention. Nope. Nope. If I wanted attention, I'd be on there ranting and raving about stuff. I don't. It's even like, I don't know if you've seen it, my little uh, song about the mask, you know, but that was just, that was just, um, I was talking to my wife. I was talking to my wife and um, I told her, I said, I've been to West Virginia. I've been to, I've been to, I've been to um, Richmond, Virginia. I've been all over North Carolina and I ain't caught nothing. And I started thinking to myself, well, I started remember that song that Rob Zombie and them's got out called I've Been Everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. And I started just I changed it up, made it into a funny song, you know. And it was mainly it wasn't the I know some people believe those masks, but I don't. I don't I believe they I believe they do more harm than good because a person like me who has real bad sinuses, when you put them things on and breathe in them, I mean they just it just makes me sick. I mean, I, today Costco made me put one on. When I got out of there, I stopped and got me a, a huge bottle of water, and I'm not joking with you. That was a 40 ounce, 44 ounce bottle of water. I drank every bit of it because that mask had just dried. Me. And um, you know, I think it did more harm than good, and people just don't realize that, you know. But but to each his own, and let's get back to talking about Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so, uh, uh, right. you, know, you know, that is kind of fascinating that, you know, they have this message of uh, peace and love and all that. And, you know, they are hidden, and it seems uh, to be that, uh, you know, they do maybe have this lost knowledge that they might teach certain people. It seems to be that some of your stuff that you're saying is uh, what we've experienced, you know, some of it uh, shimmering. Uh, image of a Bigfoot. We actually was going down a trail, and as we were turning the headlights, it, whatever it was was running, and it was like a person. It was just on the outside of the headlights, but it was uh, predator form, I guess. I mean, about as close as I would say at nighttime. But uh, uh, yeah, no. it's very interesting that uh, a lot of the stuff is reported by people and orbs and. I know we had some questions about uh, are they connected with the UFOs? Uh, we have questions of have you seen any more uh, reptilians? Do you, what do you think that agenda is? We have uh, are there aggressive ones that you've experienced? Uh, what about like out, outside of your home and these ones you interact with? 
I know one time I went, I was going to the trail. I went to the trail and I noticed the bridge had been ripped apart and, and, and the side of the bridge had been thrown 30 feet away. Uh, I go down, the fence has been ripped off and it's been thrown a good distance. Um, and a bench, a wooden bench, them things were heavy too, it had been picked up and thrown about 30 feet. And I go on down and, and these, these real big heavy steel tables um, had been thrown up onto the darn thing. And there's no physical way one person could ever move those things. I mean, much less. Um, so the theory goes around, they come in and the sheriff's department come in and they say, oh, some ATVs got in there and did that. Well, there was no ATV tracks anywhere. And I told him, I said, I'm going to tell you what happened. Some really, really big, something really big and something angry came through here and just tore up everything. And then you start thinking, oh, what in the world would have the physical strength to tear up that stuff like that? And the only thing it could have been would have been a, either, a, either a big, mean, angry dog man or a big, angry Bigfoot. Because that's the only thing that could physically have tore that stuff up like that. I mean, because no human could have done it. And and that's another thing I can tell you about what they told me about their bad ones. See, they live in – Sasquatch live in what they call tribes, like the Indians used to. They live in a tribe, and they have their own – they always have their little family with them. And and if if you you do something, I think one of the, the, the cardinal sins of, uh, that they told me was if they ever hurt a human – that gets them kicked out of the tribe, and they get and they can't come back. Um, if they eat a human, then they get killed. They kill them. But if they do something bad like harm a human or do something like harm one of the other ones, they send them off. That's why you hear about these lone big ones that, that cause trouble because they've been kicked out of the group. Now they ain't part of a group, so now they're going to go around – you know, being mean. I don't want to be. I don't want to be around a Sasquatch that's been kicked out of a tribe because I kind of believe that's what the Ohio Grassman is. I believe that might be why he's always by himself because every Bigfoot I've ever seen has had a family with. Him. You know, most all of them. Um, most all of them. If you see one, if you look at that picture close enough, you'll see more. You know, um, um, and then and then like the UFO thing. I do believe there's some kind of connection because I've seen UFOs land over there where they where that habitat area was. I've seen it land there. I was even recording a UFO that was up in the air, and I kept hearing uh, chants coming from the woods. And I and I I keep hearing it. I don't see them, but I feel them. And they're walking. They're walking toward that UFO chant, and then that UFO comes down. So I don't know if they got on it or the UFO was bringing them something, you know, who knows, but you know, that's an interesting story. Cause there was one, there was one night. I mean, I never seen the sky black. I mean, I've seen it dark. I've always, but I've never seen it black. This was solid black and it was, the wind was up real bad. It was raining real hard. I mean, I, and I look up in the sky now I'm live on Facebook. I look up in the sky and I watch a portal open up and it opened up in the sky. And when it came down, um, the next thing I know, one, two, three, it was like six ships come out of that portal and, and come across over on that land and formed a V shape. And they formed a V shape and they hovered there for a minute. And one of them actually flew over me while it was after they, after they dispersed, one of them actually flew over me. And I mean, I, I mean, I don't have to shoot. I was thinking I might be in and get in there, be in the middle of an abduction in a, every any minute there. That's why I stayed live on Facebook just in case that happened, you know. But yeah, but that that was a uh, that would answer your question about whether or not you know. And kind of if you notice, kind of where they usually are. That's usually where the UFOs like to land, you know. And um, I kind of believe they might be. You know, I know they're guardians for us. Maybe they're guardians for them, too. You know, maybe they come out to guard them when they come down. But but then there, here's another thing that I kind of believe. There's Sasquatch people among us right now. They live amongst us, and we don't even know it. And I start thinking about one person, Andre the Giant. Look at that dude. I mean, look at that dude, and look how big he got. 
I mean, I mean, then you start thinking nobody to this day has had the biggest hands. There's been other people real big and tall, but Andre fit the actual mold of a Sasquatch. I mean, we don't know if he shaved it. We don't know if he shaved his body. I'm pretty sure he did. But just imagine if he did, and he would probably be because look at the head of hair that man had. So I would think I was. I would think I would not be one one hundred percent sure. But we all have Bigfoot DNA in us. You know, you always hear about that min- missing DNA that we have. It's like twenty five percent of our DNA. Nobody knows what it is, right. and Absolutely. the twenty five. To 25 percent it belongs to them that's that's our dna our, our, that's how we're connected to them i'm almost certain of it and um shoot there's other people i mean they told me this i see that was a good part about me i never read a bigfoot book i never was into that bigfoot stuff i got all my knowledge directly from them i didn't get it from nobody else i mean i got it from them and and that that is the that is the greatest feeling about when I talk about it. I didn't get it from nobody else, but then you hear other people. Uh, there's other people that say the same stuff, and how did they know unless they contacted them the same way? You know, you know. There's somebody I forget her name. Oh, oh man, the, where that they didn't actually have an encounter. They actually there's people that will go down in the woods and they will go into you know they're going in deep deep um oh, what is it called but where the where you know they start you know you get yourself all the way to the point where you're in between sleep you're in between sleep and um and being awake i mean it's a I've, I, that's when they would shoot that's when they'd hit me with those astro projections i'd be half out and i could call out to them and they would answer i mean they 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 told me one time they had to teach me how to not be tricked by the grays that's one thing they told me i could and they also i don't know how they did it they gave i was one of these type people that when i went to sleep i could be one of these people that opened up portals and that's why i was having problems with ghosts everywhere i moved you know, I had problems with ghosts everywhere until I moved down there. They taught me how to actually keep the ghost out of my sleep. I mean, and and I mean, even even I mean, I've even had ghosts come in, uh, like ghosts from somebody that I didn't like, come to me and beg me, beg me to do something for him. And I said, "Get out of my head!" And I bumped him right out. But then all of a sudden, you know, my 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 youngest brother comes to me a couple of years ago that died on the street corner. And and I was able to I was able to talk to him. He could tell me what really happened. And then 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 like I said, it was like a loop that just kept coming around and around. And then he moved on. So he waited twenty years to come find. He tried, he must have tried for twenty years to find me. And when when I finally finally talked to him, you know, I guess he felt he could move on now since somebody knows. Cause shoot, I had an autopsy done on him and. It come in conclusive. Nobody would talk. I mean, they tr- the police treated him like he was a bum, so they didn't try to think it was any kind of homicide. But it actually was. You know, some dude, um, some dude wanted something he had, and he was walking up the street holding it, and the dude come up behind him and hit him real hard and grabbed it, and he hit the ground, and that was the end of it. But that's what he kept saying. He kept looping that around. I was walking and such and such, and he told me who it was, but I can't remember now. But but he told me who it was, but it wouldn't be nothing I could do about it, you know. But I'm glad he got that closure. I mean, and that's the weird part. I mean, I go to my I go to my parents' grave with Stacy um, when we were doing this other project, and and I asked us because I didn't know if my dad had moved on. So I'm asking, I'm asking. Um, you know, my I keep asking, is my dad okay? And then I get the clearest, clearest response saying your dad is okay. I mean, clear as day it came back. And I was standing right at my parents' grave, and he got that on camera. So I'm hoping one day we're going to get to see this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you want to talk about the movie now? or uh, I yeah, mean, the document? Yeah, uh, yeah wow. Well, yeah, of course. Here's so you, the inner part. I've been knowing Stacy for a couple years, and Stacy thought I was full of crap. He didn't believe none of it. He didn't believe none of it. So Stacy says one day, um, 
and I was getting ready to pay somebody $1,500. I had come up with this idea about my life story called My Journey with Monsters. I had come up with the idea. I wanted to do it, you know, and get somebody to film me so we could do it. And then one day I was going to get, give uh, somebody $1,500 to do the poster for it. And and Stacy come up and said, hey, give me the $1,500 and I'll come up there and film it. And I said, all right. So what I had to do with Stacy was I had to um, – I had to show this guy that I'm legit and, I, and I'm not fake or nothing. And, and, um, so we start out, he's trying to do an interview with me and I can't do it. You know, I've never really been on camera that much anyway. So he, he gets some of it and then he tells me, I walk, I'm walking with him. I said, let's, Hey, let's do this. I said, every Bigfoot documentary I know of is serious and boring. I said, how about we have some fun with this? I said, don't let's don't this let's don't be so uptight. So I'm start talk, I start walking and I start telling him these these stories. He said, Hold on a minute, go back and tell me this again. So then next thing I know, we're on a roll and we had a whole freaking thing filmed. I mean, and and you know, and by the time I think the second day of filming, he'd been been around me by the second day, he comes to me and says, Hey, I want to make this into a human interest story. He said, I want to make it about you. He said, I don't want to, I don't really want to, I don't want it to be like, like a Bigfoot documentary. I want it to be more of a documentary about you. And, um, I said, he said, if you do this, he said, we're going to go places with it. So I told him, I said, shoot. So we went back film day three. Um, my friend Kimberly McGeorge came in. She talked about, like I said, about the dimensions and how people, People have abilities. Um, and again, let's talk about this. I, I mean, not this. I'll get back to the thing, but whatever you want to talk about. Oh, yeah. Well, I have I have what they call psychic abilities, but I'm one of these people that they, they say is a no one. You know, I just know things. I mean, I don't I'm not one of these psychics that can go and feel feel the stuff. I'm not one of the ones that can see it. I just know. And they get, you know. Watching TV sometimes, I mean, with my daughter or a movie I've never seen before, and I can tell you what's going to happen way, way before it does. How do I know? I mean, I used to be when I was a kid. I mean, when I was growing up, I was in high school, and and it started, too, when I was, you know, when my daddy was betting on, my daddy was betting on, um, oh, I guess it's Richard Petty's last race. And Dale Earnhardt was a lock to win this race. And my daddy had a, a $200 bet on Dale Earnhardt. I kept telling him Richard Petty was going to win. Now, who believed that Richard Petty hadn't won and I don't know when? I guess who wins the race? And my dad, I thought my dad was going to kill me <laughs> when I did that. <laughs> but, and it went on for years, you know. It went on for years. I started knowing, like, 19, 1997 was so horrible because I was predicting everybody's death. I was seeing every, I was just seeing everybody's death. And, and, you know, I tell my wife, I said, I tell my wife, I said, you know, her mama's up in the hospital with pneumonia. And I told, and my wife said, Oh, I'll go see her another day. I said, no, I think you better go now. I don't know why I just told her to go. And guess what? As soon as she left that the hospital, they said the woman passed on. So if I hadn't have made her do that, she'd have never seen her mama again. And, uh, then it was like, then it's like, again, like talking about my brother. I mean, two days before New Year's, I tell him, I said, you need to come home. I said, my biggest fear in life is they're going to find you on the side of the road dead. So I'm driving home. I get on New Year's Eve. I get this awful feeling that I need to find him. I just get this awful feeling, but I go on home. And as soon as we get home, they call me. Guess where they found him? On the side of the road dead. And then it kept going. I was sitting there seeing my wife's dad at, at this burger joint every day, and I noticed his face was getting redder and redder. And all of a sudden, one day, I just say, look, I think he's going to have a heart attack, and he's going to have a heart attack at a stoplight. I said, he's either going to have a, have it at that light, and then he's going to wreck and kill a bunch of people, or he's going to get to his driveway and die in his driveway. And she said, why would you say that? I said, I don't know. I just know. And guess what? He had the heart attack at the stoplight. He made it to his driveway and died in his driveway. I mean, and stuff like that. 
you start thinking, why in the world? And then somebody said, you might be touched by the left hand of God, that God might be, God might be giving you these abilities to try to warn people, you know, but how do you warn somebody and tell them they're going to die? I mean, how do you do it? You right. can't do it. That was the frustrating part about it. You know, it, and it, it was almost like I couldn't go around anybody sick anymore because I would know. And so I stopped doing it. I stopped doing it. I, about, I think about uh, after 98, I think it kind of subsided because I stopped going around sick people or going around people that I thought might die, you know, um, and then, like I said, that's what I tell anybody. You think these abilities are, you have abilities, you think these abilities um, are good. Sometimes they just be downright horrible. I mean, but but then all of a sudden, yeah, out now, I, I mean, you tell me how, why I can't bring myself to buy a lottery ticket. Why I can't bring myself to there and bet on football or why I can't bring myself to play, pay for, you know, play cards for money. I can't do none of it anymore. I used to, I used to play with my brother. I used to play with my brothers. I play cards with my brothers, but when they started playing for money, I said, Nope. And then, then, then they started, I had a fantasy football. I was winning every year. They started wanting to play for money. I bailed out of it. I said, Nope, I don't want it no more. And I believe now what it is, is this ability is God given and God is the one giving me this, this thing saying, Hey, the day you do that, those abilities will be taken away from you. And I can't bring myself to do anything like that anymore. I mean, I can't. And, uh, uh that's what my wife was saying one day. She said, we need to go play the lottery. I said, I said, can't do it. I just can't do it. And, um, you know, I think God would punish me if I did and um, so we get back. We get back to, you know, we get back to we we, you know, well, we was talking about this earlier about Anubis. You know, I didn't know what that was. It was like a big shadow, right? It was this big, massive shadow down there at the end of this tree. But I looked and I could tell he's not on the tree. He's outside of the tree. He's just in front. It gave it, the light was giving the illusion that he was. Uh, the light was giving an illusion that he was. Um, he was just a shadow on the tree, but still, what in the world? Shadow would appear on a tree like that. So I went home. I took in. I took the picture and I, I took all the color out of it. I said, "Let's see what happens if he stands out. You know, if it's a physical form there, it'll stand out if I take the color out, right? It won't." And it did. I mean, freaking long fingers, a big mane like type head, um, big big forearms. Um, but real big thighs, but really skinny, skinny legs, a real, real skinny waist. And, and these big long feet, they had these long toes. And, uh, so I start thinking to myself, what is it? It ain't a dog, man. Cause it, a dog, man, don't look like it. Most dog men just look like Bigfoots with a, with a, a dog head. You know, most of them do, but, which I still believe are, they are the descendants of Anubis. I believe they really are, but, but, uh, so this thing, um, you know, I start looking online for pictures of anything that re resembled that. And the only thing I kept coming up with that looked like that was Anubis. And that's how I figured out that it had to be something like that. It was some type of Anubis. I don't know if it was the Anubis, but I think it was something, something like that. But, you know, it wasn't long after I seen that. I mean, it's just not even probably a good quarter of a mile down that trail. There was something way, way in the back that one day I'm actually just taking my camera and scanning. And it was this gigantic bird. I mean, it was a gigantic, it wasn't no bird. It was like a bird man. And I mean, this thing had a face, it had a beak. It had, it was white. It had eyes like an eagle. It looked like an eagle, but it looked so gi ginormous. Um, and, you know, it stayed out there. I could go out there, and it would be out there every time I went out there. And the day we filmed my journey with monsters, I showed it to Kimberly and Stacy. And after that, he was gone. There's a, here's something that people need to understand about these cryptids. They trust you. They come out to see you. When you show them to somebody else, then you broke that trust, and then they won't come out no more. So that, that bird man never did come back. But then I'm, 
I'm at that same area and I'm filming. It looks like a Bigfoot. I mean, clear as freaking day. But beside of it was another Bigfoot. But this thing had a bird like head. But it was black. It wasn't it wasn't like the the white one. This thing was black and it had this big beak. And I mean, I got a really clean picture of that. I mean, and to me, I don't know, I don't know, you know, I seen them back there. I kept trying to film them and and I mean, I think this place had a bunch of portals open. I think I think where Anubis was, I think there was one there. I believe there was one where the Birdman was. And um, and then you find out the people that owned the trail hundreds of years ago used to go down there and practice practice witchcraft and, and practice, um, you know, they would go get artifacts from all over the world. And some of them were related to like, like what Alistair Crowley was doing. They were doing it down there. And I kind of believe that might be why, I mean, it ain't just cryptids down there either. There's evidently a, a, a little girl that died in the pond that, that um i tried to get her own you know i actually got her own camera a lady told me that it was one that she's seen one there before so not only was not only is the place full of cryptids it's haunted i mean you wouldn't believe the stuff i got out of there but well we got there's a video you know there's a video on my journey with monsters where this bigfoot's got his face sticking through this this um stump and uh I walk him by that thing and, and I go back. I said, what was that? So I go back and look and um, I see him. And then I start filming him. And my daughter tells me after I'm starting to film him, my daughter tells me now it's getting dark. She says, there's people coming just to get me to leave because she wanted to go home. <laughs> so she messes me up. I would have had a long video with that dude. I'd have stayed there and talked to him until he stood up. But she tricked me because one thing I did, and I still do if I go out there or anywhere else, one thing I do to protect the Sasquatch or any other being out there is if I see people coming, I will act like I'm not, I act like I'm doing nothing until they leave. Or, or you know, and or if, uh, man, it made me so mad one day. I mean, this Bigfoot, it was ringing, and me and my wife was on this other trail. And it's raining, and I see this Bigfoot. He's standing right next to a tree, and he sees me. And I'm right there. I start filming him, and then some people come walking up. So I had to drop the camera, and when I did, I watched him. He took off and ran. So I tried to run to catch him and see where he went, and no luck. But I got a few minutes, few seconds of him, and I got a really good picture from it. And I'm like, I love this. What I like about that is the story. I mean, it's the story. It ain't the, it ain't necessarily the video, but it's the story of how I saw him in the rain, and 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 I actually got to watch him take off and run, while I while I was trying people out of my way so I could get back filming him, you know. But and but I did that to protect those people because I didn't want those people seeing what I'm filming. But do you know I had a I think I had a Batman shirt on, and those same people told me. They said we would have probably needed you to be Batman a few minutes ago, and I don't and I don't know what they were talking about, but I think they may have seen something too, you know, because the way they acted. This trail was almost four miles, and it, and it really I don't know how why you could even call it a trail. They don't they haven't paved it. It's just a strip of a strip of land that you walk on. Snakes everywhere. I mean, you think this would be the perfect place for. Or anything that wanted to hide and it was so i mean it was so crappy there you know but but there was one day you know i i was there it was like 90 some degrees i was hot i didn't have anything to drink with me i didn't got around it i then got around it well, about three quarters of it and i'm about to finish and then i hear something running and it's running hard too and i mean it ain't i look back there's no dogs I look back, there's no deer. So I keep walking. I keep hearing it running. Then it comes right by me. And when it comes right by me, it grabs my arm. I had a red mark on my arm. And not only that, I had soaking wet hair, man. And my hair was almost dry because of how fast he came by me. And I was like, I was shaken by that. I tried, kept trying to go live on Facebook afterwards to tell people. I mean, when you have a moment like that and your adrenaline's going, you know, 
I mean, and you know something big came by you. I mean, it happened again. Um, it happened again when I, it, I got caught in a rainstorm at the other trail. And I'm having to jump in the woods, and I asked them, I said, hey, listen, y'all going to have to keep me from getting rained on because, I mean, it was raining, I mean, super hard. I didn't have nothing on but a tank top, and I had a camcorder in my hand and my cell phone, and I could not protect either one of them because of the rain was so bad. And um, so I'm in the woods. I ain't real far, but I'm in the woods trying to get stay dry, and all of a sudden this awful smell comes up behind me. And I knew that smell because I know um, it's. I know the smell. I've always I've smelt it before. I knew what it was. I mean, it smelled like really bad bo. Um, I mean, really, really bad bo and garbage. And and if you ever smell that, <laughs> that's their oh, smell yeah. when they show up. Yeah. And he had to be behind me or somewhere, but I never saw him. I just smelt him. But that just tells you how many times, I mean, I'm around them. I never get hurt. I mean, they even did one thing for me once. Um, and it's not in the, my journey with monsters. I mean, but it should have been. But there's a story about where I was walking. And I was walking um, I was walking down the part of the trail, and I was looking at my phone. And then all of a sudden, something grabs me by the arm. And when he grabs me, I'm looking around and I see something up on the hill. I said, are you the one that grabbed my arm? And uh, so I start trying to film it. And then I think I see something up there, but you know what, you know what they were grabbing my arm for. Now there was nobody else on that trail. I mean, nobody who could have grabbed my arm and pulled me to get my attention. And you know why they did it? Two copperheads crossing and they're in right in front of me. I would have stepped on them if, uh, if he hadn't have grabbed my arm. And and I saw the snakes go up into the woods, and I'm like, freaking save my life right there. Because if I got bit by two of them and step on two of them, I mean, I might not be here now. So it just tells you they they do things. Um, I mean, there's another instance. Um, and I'm not saying this is Sasquatch. This might be God, but but I'm not certain. But I'm in my house, and I tell my wife, I said, I want to go to the trail, but I just don't feel like it. I said something ain't right. She said, well, don't go. I said, oh, I'll go anyway. So I go I go and get my car. I crank it up. I go to back it out. Then I pull it right back in the driveway, cut it off, come back in the house and said, I'm not going. I said, something's not right. So I don't go. Then I find out on the news later that a wreck had just happened right down there where I was heading. So if I had went down in there, I would have been involved in that big wreck. So something got me. I don't know if who warned me but i kind of believe it might have been them you know but but you don't know i mean i ain't got no proof of who warned me it could have been my intuition but i think it was either it wasn't my time to go and i was being warned not to go and it wasn't being a warning it was just like me just knowing it kind of the way i'm like i said they healed me by teaching me how to i mean get me that desire to run them woods and walk those woods i mean I mean, you lose all the way down to 260 pounds and you lose all that weight just because you want to find them. And I mean, it's almost done. It's done in the simplest way. But I kind of like that theory goes, well, well, can the Sasquatch heal you? Well, maybe they can. I mean, there was one day, one day I'm filming. I kept filming them. And then one day I just asked them when they had, when I was talking to them, I said, why do you always have a root or something in your mouth chewing on it every time I see one of you? And they keep telling me about, you know, the some roots on certain trees down in this roots to, down on certain trees pro, will provide you all kind of healing properties and energy and stuff. And that's why they chew on it. So I'll start looking up roots to see what they're talking about. And, you know, I've tried to figure out what's made out of a root. And then I find out turmeric's made out of a root. So I start checking into turmeric and I start taking it. And guess what? I've been taking it ever since. And, and it's helped my knees like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it's turned into a, it's turned into a healing thing, man. And, and it's like, uh, it's, it's like almost like I, like I said, I think, I think they got some kind of way of healing you if they really want to heal you. But I mean, don't get me wrong. My knees still give me problems. If I, if I overdo it, they will. 
but right. but I realized I'm I realized when I talked to my wife a couple months ago, I realized I said, I said, shoot, I said, why am I not in a wheelchair right now? I said, why was they giving me all that medicine and telling me my knees are shot? If my knees were shot, like they say, why am I still doing this? Why am I doing more now? I'm actually doing more now than I used to. Planting freaking trees. Um, um, I have to drive further now. I used to, my wife used to work two minutes from where where we live. Now now we live uh, out in the county. I mean, out in the country. Now now it's almost like it's like twenty minutes, twenty five minutes to go there and back. So I'm doing forty five minutes three times a day now. You know, every day I'm driving that much, and I'm also I'm also pretty, pretty much the one cleaning the house and doing, and I do all the grilling and cooking, you know, I do yeah, every, yeah, I do yeah. everything. And I'm like, how am I There's still doing this? Cooking. You know, you know, yeah, it, it you, know, makes uh, you know, it, these things are just uh, so mysterious and wondrous, but uh, segue into a different segment. We got us uh, pictures and stuff to, to show people and, uh, in, uh, for you to talk about them. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. We got, um, Got some tree structures we'll show first, actually, and then we'll get into uh, these other photos. They're pretty interesting, and actually, um, the one that's really close up that you said was taken um, on your porch. So let me uh, do that real quick. There's one. I mean, there's one um, that I got at that other trail, and I was filming it. It looked like a bunch of Bigfoots down there, and I was filming it. They were hanging around this stump. And then this, I mean, this almost reddish looking thing come out from around the tree. I mean, he had spikes on his head. And he had this devil like face. Oh yeah, that's the that's from that other trail, you know, where I said I got grabbed. Um, they were building that, you know, the you know, the wind had tore it down, but you should have seen it before. They had really built that structure up really good and and and, you know, that's why I tell people, I said, when you see something like this, just study it for a minute and, and research it and look at it. And you'll see all the different things that's been brought there to make that. And I said, it can't be it can't be hoaxed because the people around there wasn't picking up anything. All the trees are all laying down. But this was this was like they were this was like they were. They were um, building something, and I know what it was. They build these to, to, to basically get in and hunt. You know, I kind of believe that's what they're for now. You know, the more I learned about it, you know, why would they build it? You know, um, why would they build it like that unless, you know, it could be used to get out of the rain or it could be used, like I said, I think it's a way for them to get in, get inside and hunt, you know. Yeah, I actually got to see them do that. I actually got to see them do that one night. I mean, you ought to see how they do it. It's like a line of them. They'll, one lines up on one side, one lines up the other, and the other one coaxes the deer to come out. And the deer comes out, and then they all jump it. And then if it gets by them, there's another group waiting. I mean, I saw it one night. I was like, wow. I mean, I mean, I, like I said, I, yeah, that one, let's see. That one was done at one of the trails, too. And that one kind of you know, that's kind of a pretty good, uh, you know, what they call a, that's not even an X. That looks more like an asterisk. You see how one's sitting in the back, two in the side, and, um, oh, I'll tell right. you a story. It, I'll tell you a story about out. one, too. I mean, while, while you're finding the pictures, um, we had this tornado that came down there one night. Me and my daughter was coming home, and it was on the other side of the woods while we were trying to get in the house. Lightning had it done come and cut, come and cut down the neighbor's big tree, and it fell on our garage. Then I get inside, trying to hurry up and get inside, and I noticed something had picked up the grill and threw it clean across the yard. Then I see something else that was really big had been picked up, moved, and threw. And then I see the tree, which was my wife's favorite tree, which was a we, I mean, a crepe myrtle. They had tore this tree all to pieces and made a hut out of it. I mean, I mean, this thing had walkways in it. I mean, that's how well they built it. While that ran, that storm was going on, they decided they could do some work. So, so I go back in the house, and that same window I was telling you about earlier had been pulled down from the outside. 
and something really big was trying to get inside that house. And thank goodness we didn't we didn't greet it when we got there. But but my wife was mad the next day. She seen they tore a tree up. So she's out there talking about, you know, they tore my favorite tree up. So I'm inside and watching TV and I get this really, really, I mean, a headache from you nowhere. And I mean, it's just almost like that's it right there. I'm going to tell you the story. That's it right there. But what they did, what they did was they kept telling, they kept making me want to tell them, basically tell me I need to come outside. And I saw that hanging up. And I told Brenda, I said, that's my wife. I said, come on outside. I said, I think they, they made you something. And I showed it to her. That thing was hanging. Now, they they put that together and then took some like really light string and hung it up out there. It was hanging. I mean, I, and I mean, they did it as a, a apology to her for tearing her tree up. I mean, ain't that crazy? <laughs> it, it, it's, it shows a manipulation. All right, so we got uh, some uh, pictures of more uh, Sasquatch stuff, and uh, we'll uh, post that. And uh, you already told that at the beginning. Some people were, weren't watching when you uh, told the picture of uh, – you said it was on your deck. You, you told Yeah. Them. I don't know if you found it, but it's it's on my yeah. page. Yeah. Yep, um, it's just a big leg. It's, it's, either, it's a, either a big hip. That's it right there. Look at that. Yeah, that does – that looks pretty yeah. impressive. I don't believe I, – I believe it's one of two things. I believe it's either uh, – I think because of the way the camera was tilted, I think it got a shot of his shoulder. I don't know if it's his hip, but it could be his hip. Or it's either his hip or his shoulder. And I'm thinking I'm thinking it's his hip because look how, how it arches. See how it arches at the top like a back? And it goes down. So I bet you that, that – I'm po- I'm almost positive that it's either a young Bigfoot that that's got really really th- hair like that, or it could have been a freaking dog man. Because look how the hair is yeah. on that thing. Yeah, I mean, look at it. Uh, when I first seen it, you know, I thought it was maybe a, his arm or something, shoulder and arm. Uh, yeah, it's either the fur. Caught it could head. be because that could be his neck up there too. I mean, we don't know, but. I just think it's still a pretty darn impressive piece of evidence because we know something really big tipped that tipped that trail cam, and that's why it got its picture. You know, he jumps on there, and when he does, the trail cam moves, and it moves where he's at, and it it took that picture sideways. That's why it looks like it does, you know. But and I went when I was going through those pictures, and I saw that I was like, oh my goodness, what have we done, got? <laughs> Because I'd never really seen one that good, you know, that close. But, I mean, you can tell, one, it's not a dog. It's too big to be a dog. It's it, it's almost like a – built like a human being, but it's got that really black fur. I mean, black hair. Yeah, yeah it's definitely so, different. And, uh, you can tell that uh, the top of the fence right there is the bigger piece of wood. So a dog, it would be an awkward position for a dog. To be yeah, able, it's something out. trying to. It was something trying to move. He, I think he jumped when he did. It, the trail cam kind of shook because it wasn't bolted to anything. It was just sitting on top of a grill. So I think what happened was, I think what happened was, when he jumped, the, the grill shook the and the and the and the trail cam shook and it took the picture. It's a shame that it didn't get more than that, but still, I'm happy with whatever I got. You know, exactly. You know? All right. So uh, we got this one right here. What's what's the story on this one? Uh, let's see. That's probably one of the ones I took out there at that trail. I mean, it looks like it might be two of them right there. Um, you know, I took so many out there. I mean, that was a good thing. I, and I tell people this too: get one of these camcorders that takes pictures. But don't, and I, and I'll give some. I'll give you everybody is listening a secret. Don't go out and get a 4K. Don't go out and get a 6K or whatever because a good old standard 180i is all you need because they don't show up as good in, in the 4Ks. I know. I didn't try them. Ain't it funny how I've had two 4Ks and and I dumped them for, for a $300 Canon camcorder that I use to this day. That's very interesting. You know? yeah. yeah, because, I mean, they're not – they're they're beaming off of a different frequency. 
and I think they're more of the the you know you pick them up better with a with a um you know with a lesser lens you know more like they seem to look better when you put them you know it's something to do with the light that they beam off you know somebody said that and I kind of agree with them I think they know how to I think they know how to um, manipulate light and, and because they know how to manipulate light, sometimes they look dark like that. Sometimes they look like shadows, but um, honestly, I don't, I don't film them unless I absolutely see them. If, I, if I'm zooming out and I see one and I'm going to look, I'll look at it 100% before I'll take a picture of it or record it, you know? So we got, uh, we got this one right here. What's the story on this? And then we got, uh, two others uh, that pretty good. Oh man, back in there, and then there's some kind of white looking. I'm assuming that's a ghost or or a demon or something. I don't know, but that's a, um, right in the middle, right there, is a dog man because I can actually see his ears. So. Shoot, I got thousands of pictures. I mean, oh man, but that's a, yeah, you do. That's, a that's a pretty decent one though. Um, so we got a, we got these two that I think are, are really good. Yeah, that that one. Um, because you take the same picture twice and it actually looks like it moved. You yeah. Know, oh, oh I, you know, but well, here's the thing. I take what I do is I take multiple pictures, right? I take multiple. When I'm recording these things, I take multiple pictures. So if you go into my file, you're going to see multiple pictures from that same spot. You know, or or if I went back the next day and I filmed from that same spot or go in that same area, it may not be nothing there. You know, that's why I always like to go back to back every day because people tell you, you know, and look at that. I mean, you don't think that's a dog, man. Look at that nose coming out of that thing. I mean, and you know what they do? They they the they the kings of camouflage. What they do is they'll put their body back behind a big bunch of foliage, or they'll or they'll stand up behind a tree and they'll give you the illusion there's nothing there. And you just gotta have the eye for it when you go to film it. But you can see that's a dog like being right there. I mean, look at the freaking nose. That's what I actually I think that's what triggered it. See the nose? You can see the darn nostrils really good. You know, oh, we, but yeah, those those are good. I, I mean, honestly, I love the full body pictures better than I do anything because I did get one out there that was, I did get one out there, man. It was so good. I mean, I even sent it to you know that you remember old Trapper from Mountain Monsters. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I love that dude. He because he was one of these people that. He wouldn't shoot you no bull. He would tell you whether or not you got something, you know. And I sent him that picture, and he said, and not that picture, but the one I'm talking about, which was an orange-looking Bigfoot standing in the down toward the back, and and uh, that was probably one of the be one of the best ones I ever got because it was you got to see him in his real and you know got to see he was that orange color like they all talk about see what people don't get is they all got human hair like we do i mean and some of them don't have hair on, like 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 you know some of them don't aren't real hairy some of the women ones look I mean, they will blow you like our women the only difference is you know i've seen a few of them they got kind of like a uh a, a, Oh, what you call it type face um, from the old, old, old days. I can't think of the name of them, but, um, but they don't, they, they kind of got like a big kind of, it don't look exactly, but I'll tell you right now, I've seen this too. I've seen women actually hanging out out there. So there's women, actually female women that will actually go out there and hang and live with them because I've seen some, actual real females in that habitat site and i was like what are they doing over i mean i went out one day i mean this will blow your mind the day before i, I looked up at the railroad tracks and i said good day there's about a hundred of them up there up at this point there's only five or six of them that i knew of 
Next thing I know, I go back out the next morning, and there's freaking naked, naked women everywhere over there laying on the rocks. I mean, they were laying on the rocks sunbathing, and I'm like, where did all these things come from? But it was like all these females came there. I guess they came there to mate, and I guess once they were done, they left. And But it was for that whole summer, right? That whole summer was crazy. I even caught one of the females masturbating in the woods. I actually was filming it. Didn't know what I was filming. It and I was yeah, like, I've heard, I've heard her that. Yep. Yeah, you did uh, encounter that. In the woods. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's crazy. I mean, there was another one. There was another one. I seen him and then he ducked and he ran. And when he did, I had got a picture of him. So he ducked and ran. And I swear the darn Bigfoot looks like Peter Chris of Kiss. I mean, he looks, because of the black around his eyes, I mean, he, he looks like he's wearing glasses, and he looks just, it looks like Peter Chris. But I knew when I took that, got that picture of it, he took and run, and he hid down in the darn bushes, and then I saw him again, so I chased him. But, oh, and I'll tell you another thing, too. Um, I don't think you can put a, a gun and put a scope on them and zoom it in and think you're going to get one. I'm in my house looking across the road, right? And I zoom in, I zoom the camera across there, and I see this female standing there sleeping. They, you know, a lot of them stand up sleeping. A lot of them do, and then the big one, the, you know, you rarely see them laying down. They're always standing up sleeping. And, uh, I mean, she's asleep. And then when that infrared hit her, she woke up and took off, and I tried to zoom to find her. And I got that on video somewhere. I just got to find it. I mean, I got it in one of my videos because, I mean, it was such a crazy thing because I was right on her, and then she woke up, and I saw her wake up and look right at me, and then, bam, she was gone. But there's another one. I mean, it's another one I got on YouTube right now. It's a mama holding a baby, and it's so the sun is beaming down so much that um, they look black. But you can clearly see there's a little young, and he's trying to – He's trying to move and get away from his mama, and she's got him by the hand, and you can see his mama and everything. I mean, that video is clear as day. And there's another one that when I when I went back and, and I took all that old stuff and I went through it. So I'm going through this one video. I, I knew I had this picture of this big Bigfoot. So I'm watching the video, and I start realizing, wait a second. I was freaking having sex over there when I was recording them, and I didn't realize it when I first saw it. So when I took a second look at it, I realized that I was filming them having sex. And and I can tell you now, they do it just like we do. I mean, everything we do, they do it the same way. <laughs> so, well, that's, but, they're people of the forest, right? So, uh, well, yeah. But I, like I said, I tell people sometimes I've seen too much. I've seen way too much. and and but when i got over to the trail i was seeing something entirely different i wasn't seeing tribes of sasquatch i was seeing bird men nubuses um, all kind of different creatures over i mean even dog man i got a really i mean a really clean picture of a dog man the video is so good but it goes by so fast you've seen but you got to watch the video really really and you got to pay attention to that first few seconds because the wind was blowing so bad i couldn't get it focused on him but i got enough of him to get a picture and i got enough of him to say hey watch that video you'll see it i mean this thing had those pointy ears he had the dog face he had you can even see his belly i mean his belly looked like a dog's but I mean, I couldn't get his legs, but I got his, you know, I love it when I get a full body one. If I see one standing out there and it's full body, one day I go out there and I mean, I'm not joking with you. There was the biggest Bigfoot I ever saw standing right behind the nastiest looking dog man I've ever seen. Kind of reminded me of that first one. And they were in that same area where Anubis was and they were standing there watching me. And that, that's crazy, ain't it? It's almost like, it's almost like, and I've, I've heard the birds too. The birds will want them too. I mean, the birds used to, when I'd come outside, the birds would want them. Maybe in the crow or something over there going, he's coming, he's coming. And you can hear it plain as day. And they tell them, they tell them he's coming. And, uh, uh, and 
And then, uh, then it's like, here he is, here he is. So that, that we were warning him. I'm like, you stupid bird, shut up, because <laughs> they, they would. Yeah. No, I, think yeah, I think definitely can utilize uh, and understand warning calls from animals and birds, and especially when they're warning them against humans. You um, know what? You know what? I think they are. I mean, I think they're part of this earth. I think they're part of us. I think they're they're part of this earth, and and that's how they're able to do what all they do is, um, you know, I've seen trees come. I've got a tree. You've seen all those tree pictures I put, took of that one tree that looks like a Bigfoot. Yep, I mean, yep. why in the world did a what they call a um a big a tree um I think they call it a tree gourd or something like that. Why would one come out in the shape of a Bigfoot? I mean, I heard they carved his face, but but. But the 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 actual face is there. They didn't when they carved it. It just come made him come to life. But I mean, you go out there next to that thing, and I mean, I've I've actually went out there and touched him and got energy from him. You know, I mean, and um, that's the same thing too with the other trail. I'd be I'd be so freaking hot, and I'd be I'd be I'm trying my best to get get to some water, and guess what shows up? A big old patch of blackberries. So I'm able to go there and get me some blackberries, get my mouth dry and get back to filming again. And I was like, this is a way to darn, you know, it's almost like a savior for me, you know, but you know, I mean, there's been, that's what I'm saying about my journey with monsters. It kind of covers all that, you know, it kind of covers all that. We try to recreate some of it, you know, um, um, it's not, I mean, everybody seems to like it. I mean, it's got four and a half stars on Amazon, so, I mean, I think everybody likes it, but it's like I said, it's kind of a fun thing. It wasn't done. I didn't want to do it that way. And now Stacy's like, this is one guy he likes to come and hang out with because I'm fun. <laughs> you know, I want to do this is what I want to do. I mean, I mean, I want to go. I want to get some money. I want to get somebody that really, really wants to put some money behind this. I want to go investigate vampires. I want to go find the real. I want to go find the vampires. Cause I want to find out if they're real, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if there's something. Yeah, and there's the also that like, theory about a wolf man versus a bit of wolf versus a dog man. Is there a such thing? And I believe, I don't, I don't think people turn into wolves, but who knows? They might, you know, we don't know what, I mean, I just seen a video of a freaking supposedly a human vampire in one of those foreign countries, a little black kid, he could do, he sat there and just transformed and when he started going into convulsions he comes back and he's got a big big two big canines in his mouth and they said his daddy was a uh, i think his daddy was practicing voodoo and stuff and rituals and stuff and and that's why the kid wound up like he did and but he don't suck blood you know he just got big teeth but i mean that's weird how you can watch this kid go from one thing to another i mean a lot of these videos um it makes you wonder if they're fake, but a lot of them are real. I mean, there's one I've seen, I've yeah, seen on right. uh, a show on the Travel Channel where they show everybody's videos and stuff. Um, um, but there was one where a girl said she saw a mermaid. And I mean, freaking, you see the head. And it, when, it come, when it goes back down, you see the darn flapper come up. And I mean, this is from some girl filming it from some lake. She didn't know what she was filming. And then she said she kept thinking she's filming a mermaid. That's kind of the way it is when I see things. I mean, why am I the only one seeing them? And, you know, it's the same thing when I would be, we'd be ghost hunting. It'd be like, why is everything happening to you? Why is everything happening to you when we leave and you're by yourself? Why did it all happen? Maybe, maybe because that's the way they want it, you know, because people with abilities seem to have more connection with spirits and and bigfoot it's almost like a connect some kind of connection there you know i mean somebody tried to say bigfoot was a is actually a ghost bigfoot's no ghost when you smell them and you feel the heat from them that ain't no ghost i mean that's a full big flesh and blood i mean i would love to know i mean we won't know like i said until, until somebody studies one and or or I would I wouldn't want nobody to kill it and try to dissect it. I would rather somebody get one on its own terms and and just study it and see 
No, they. There was something I heard. It. I, I don't think it's in my journey with monsters, but I heard this before that they had the government had one in a building and had him captured in a building and he teleported right out of it. And you know that's the abilities you want to see. Yeah, if we could get a uh, camera like right in front of us and capture these interactions, I mean, wouldn't that just be something? I mean, it would just open the door of more questions. Yeah, I mean, that we can't answer at this point. I mean, and I, I got, I got, I got one, I got one. I even because I just wanted to see if what he thought about it because it was a Bigfoot came right out of an orb that was sitting there, a purple orb, and I, I, I saw it. It, it came right out of the orb, jumped to the ground and ran and ran up behind the stump. So I started slowing it down more and more. And I could see it was actually a Sasquatch that had come out of that orb and went right up there and did that. And I thought that was one of the greatest things I ever got on camera because who else has got that? You know, who else seen it? Is he cutting out to you guys, or is he just cutting out to me? But I've actually seen him. I've actually seen him come out of orb formation. They would. It would be like this. It'd be like this white thing, orb like thing that would come in, come down, and it would spit one and one out here, spit one of them out there. And then as they spit them out, this would be it, and, and right toward the evening. They would go around right before it got dusk. They would spit them out, and then you could watch them just, they would just form right into that, what they were. And they would go right from an orb state to an actual physical state. And one morning I'm backing out, and, um, and um, I'm backing out, and um, I had just recorded them all walking through the woods. And it's like they're going back. See, what they would do, they'd stay in my woods at night, and then in the morning they'd go back across the road. So one night, one night, I, I mean, one early morning, I'm, I'm recording them, and I hear them out there making all this racket. And But then I had to get my little girl to school, so I got in the car, and I started to back out. I saw the orb. <laughs> They don't even walk the road. And I mean, how many people you seen heard that that they've seen orbs and stuff and and stuff at, at areas? I mean, it's a very possibility. You know. You know, I know, uh, I know it's like, uh, um, it's almost like, it's like a mist, but it's like a, it's almost like a mist. It, but when I saw them in it, they were all sitting in it. it. To me, it looked like a train coming across there with them all in it. And I was like, I was like, that's how they get across, the, all of them get across the road where nobody notices it. You know, I mean, I always wondered how they couldn't get seen crossing the road. You know, I know they could at nighttime, and that's another misconception about them. I, I know this from being out there with them at nighttime. The elder ones sleep; they do not. They do not hunt at night. They don't. They don't. They sleep, and they all get up about. They all get up about um, four or five o'clock, and then they leave, unless one of them's mad and he's gonna stay back and mess with me. But, but I don't, like I said, that only happen twice. You know, but. I'll tell you another one too. This, this is another one. Um, my white boxer. I got four boxers. I let them out one night, and they're always used to. They're always used to running out and then running around this tree and going to the fence because that's where a German Shepherd was always at. So this night was different. They they came out instead of instead of going straight. I mean, going around the tree, they went straight. My white boxer jumps up into the air and lands right into a big foot. 
and knocks him to the ground. It knocked her, I mean, a good five, ten feet back. And uh, he goes down, and I watch him, I'm, but I'm thinking to myself, because this is before I knew I could trust him. I thought they were going to kill me. I thought they were going to kill me and the dogs for knocking one of them down. And the dogs, the dogs run back, and they start sniffing the area, and, of course, there's that funky smell. And he's done got back into the woods now, thank goodness. And so I get them all back in the house. I go back out there and I take some pictures of the ground where he fell. And what it was, uh, I had put a bunch of old sticks from the yard and laid them at the edge of the woods, you know, to get him out of the yard. And he was standing in them. So when she hit him, he tripped. I think that's the only reason he fell because he tripped on those sticks. And, uh, and for about a week, she was sore. She just laying around sore. But they done got their scent. They done got their scent now because they they knew that the, the the dogs always knew they were around. But up until that point, it's when they got their scent. And um, after that, everywhere they'd be, and I let them out in the morning. Everywhere the Bigfoots had been that night, that night, the dogs would know they'd go pee on it. They would go to every spot around the yard where one of them had been, and they peed on it. And uh, but my white one, my wife comes in one day and says, I can't get Whisper out of the woods. She's back there in the woods. And and, um, and then all of a sudden she comes running out when something roared at her. And uh, so she runs back in the house after something roared at her. So a day or so later, I'm out there and Whisper's going back to those woods again because she knows exactly where he's at. And all of a sudden I hear it. He's like, Row! and she comes running out. <laughs> and uh, but then I'm kind of, I hate that I had to move, but by that point, I was having to get them out of the woods. I caught them one day, caught my oldest one down there in the woods one day, sitting down right beside one, and he's rubbing him on the head. I caught my white one doing the same thing one day. I couldn't find them. I looked down the woods, and they're down there with the Bigfoots, and. And it was almost like they liked each other. But then one night, the uh, one night, uh, some young, I think it was some young ones. I don't, I know it wasn't the old ones, but some young ones. That's in that German Shepherd. They were standing up at the edge of the road and it was on the other side of the road, just barking like crazy. And then all of a sudden, one of mine take off after it, the German Shepherd take off after it, and they run clean off in the field out there trying to catch it. Never could catch it. But, but, but then I was thinking, you know, I don't need – I've got five dogs. I don't need to have to worry about getting five dogs from out of those woods. Um, you know, now they all know. They all know. And and that right there just tells you they don't kill dogs. They don't hate dogs. I mean, the everybody just says they kill dogs. I mean, like you said, a mean one might would. But but the ones I had, they they liked them, you know. That's what they. That's what, honestly, I think that's what got their attention because I was always out there grilling and and playing with my dogs, and I was having this what I call spiritual awakening. I was changing. I don't know why, but I was changing, and all I cared about was being home. I didn't want to be around no drama anymore. I was trying to stay away from it. I intentionally started staying away from it. I wouldn't even go to Thanksgiving or Christmas anymore at my family's because I, I was always getting mad. I was always getting mad leaving because of something somebody said or something somebody did. And I finally just said, I don't need that stress anymore. So I got rid of it. And that's the thing. I live such a stress-free life now. I don't let nothing bother me. And it's like, what in the world happened to change me like that? And, and like I said, my bud, one of my buddies, when I was talking on the phone the other day, he said he thinks they up my brain. They got in my brain and, and moved me up a couple of dimensions. <laughs> and who knows? It's possible. Yeah, yeah the, it's uh, possible. In vibration, you know, you're on the uh, better vibration path and stuff. Uh, it's all very interesting stuff. And uh, Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like, it's like, um, I think what it's going to be the way all of us are when the world, you know, you've heard about even in the Bible, it says something about the, when the world all goes to crap, you know, the ones and what it is, is the ones that are already in that higher dimension 
I'll be the ones that will will go on and move. But the ones still stuck non believing, not believing this stuff is real and believing everything the T V tells you, I mean, that's the good thing about me. I never I got to where after nine eleven I stopped believing anything the T V told me. Because I didn't never believe that was real. And to this day I don't believe it was real. I believe I believe the people dying was real. I don't believe what was done was you know, but that's another story, you know. But oh, another show. Like I said, it's a it's a good thing to you know comprehend. It's like well, it's like me and my friend Kimberly McGeorge. She's one of these psychics that feel. I mean, she feels it. I'm one of these psychics that know. You put two of us together, watch and see what happens. I mean, I mean. And I talk, we got to get, we, me and her's got to get back together at some point, you know, and I want to do what I call a, a, a new type of ghost show because there's no ghost show out there that, that, that has two psychics of two different kind of psychics, you know, and that's what Stacy was wanting to do. You know, Stacy was like, you know, I want to explore this. I want to explore the gift of sight, you know, I'm not sure that's going to be made anymore, but but we do have a boatload of footage that we we did where one that she hunted ghosts a different way than I did, and we hunted ghosts. But I started feeling after I got that response from my from my parents or whoever that was at my parents' grave, and I go to Lake. You heard about this place, Lake Shawnee, right? Have you ever heard of that that lake where the little girl haunts it? Um, but I actually went on it and asked the little girl would she talk to us, and I didn't know until I got home. Her response was no, just like a little kid would say. I said, little girl, will you talk to us? And she's like, no. But then because I didn't know she said, I don't go, I don't press, I don't bug her anymore. But but the swings, two swings on this swing said they had a good hundred on there kept moving backwards and forwards for 15 minutes. So evidently she did want to play because she moved those things for 15 minutes. And then uh, two weeks later, we go to the cabin on 360 up in Richmond. Now this place is haunted as crap too, but this place had a little girl. Th this was, this will tell you about my abilities because the dude, when we first got there said, who's the psychic here? He said, I want to test you and see if you're really real. I said, all right. He said, you know anything about this house? I said, nope. He said, he said, do you know anything about that little girl that died here? I said, nope, I didn't. So I walk into the house. He says, tell me what room was the little girl's. I couldn't tell him. I just walked in it. I already knew. <laughs> Ain't that something? And I mean, and then they the story is this black dude um, that was living with the family was staying there with, and and he raped and beat this little girl and threw her out a two story window, and um, then he drug her to the woods. And but the theory, the way they talk about it, they say that the little girl was killed before she got through out the window. And um, so I'm out there and I find the little where the spot where the little girl was drugged. And I found it, and I knew it was a spot. I knew exactly what it was. And I said, at this point, I knew who her name was. So I said, Michelle, did you die here? Because I think she died on, in, right where he left her. And um, then I get home, and I'm not even listening to it. And then when I get home, I listen to it. She says, I died. I died here. So she's telling me she died there. She didn't die inside the house. That they're, they're going around telling everybody that she died in the house, and and I got the only evidence that says she didn't. You know, and I mean, ain't that weird that I go from that was kind of the test. I never ghost hunted before in my life. I've had ghosts in my. I've always had ghosts around, but but I never ghost hunted a, a day in my life. And every time I went and did it, something happened. So it's like my abilities. Um, with finding Bigfoot ain't no different than I can go find ghosts the same way and draw ghosts out the same way. Can you imagine having a show where you go into a go into a graveyard where there might be a Bigfoot and the Bigfoot and the ghost. I mean, you can get both of them on camera. I mean, there's a very good possibility to find it. 
I mean, a guy's already showed me a place. He he showed so, to put a picture on my ambassador's group, and uh, I said, "Where did you take that at?" And he said, "It's like it's like a it's like a little um waterfall down there where not far from where I live at." I said, well, "I'm going to check that out soon because I know." But the problem I got is like I was telling you before, I'm so busy that that I can't even check out my own woods, and I know my own woods. Now, here's a one one thing I've always believed: if there's a water source, there's going to be a there's a and there's woods. There's a good chance of Bigfoot's around there somewhere. Oh, yeah. And guess what? There's two ponds here and a creek. So when I get the chance to start really going around looking, and one day I will. It's probably going to be when it cools down because it's like it's so hot right now. You can't be outside long. If you do, you're going to get. I mean. The day was so hot that when I went to touch the darn door outside, the screen door, it burned my hand. That's how hot it is outside. So, you know, I think it needs to kind of cool down a little bit. But I'll give you another secret, too. Best time to catch them really good on cameras to go a bright, sunny day because because they can't hide in that foliage too good if it's sunny like that. And I found that out. I said, you go out there and it's a cloudy day or something. You might get something, but you can't see it real good. But if it, oh, and there was one, there was one. I got a picture of it. I, know, I, I people were talking about that thing left and right. I was out there one. I seen not. something. I mean, it was something massive standing down there, and I, I get closer to it because I want to hurry up because there's people up there. So I get down there and I start filming it, and it's a freaking huge female Bigfoot. But get this, she's tur- got her back turned to me, and all I'm filming is her backside, which was a massive, massive rear end. But I had so many people tell me, go back to it again the next day. Go back to it the next day. So I did. Nothing there. It was only there that time. And I, I what's was trying to find that uh, video. Oh, yeah, that's right. a... Sure, but I, oh, that's a funny. Fine. That's a funny one because it's a big giant yeah, foot. But, but uh, she was out. I mean, I could tell she had her head turned to me. So I went back and I mean, because I got a ninety-two inch TV, so I go back and watch these videos on that. You would not believe how much better they come out and how much movement you see in a TV that big. People watch these t- watch oh, yeah. it on these four Ks. They're not going to see it. My old threes, my old 3D TV will bring them. I mean, it brings them out like you wouldn't believe when you watch them on that TV. And I think it's because of the technologies, um, you know. But I mean, I can go out there sometimes if they're close and I got my cell phone. Shoot, I'll say use my cell phone. I won't even try to darn use the camcorder. There's been instances where I just needed the cell phone, but, but um. The ones down there in my woods, I mean, tell me this ain't crazy. Told you about the five or six that I seen all the time, you know, that was always there. So I had just grilled some Wagyu hamburgers. I was out there grilling them. I brought them in. I was sitting here eating, and I'm looking through my window, and there there they are. That's the family that I had been seeing, and this would, this would have been 20 miles away when I used to. The place where they would have been was 20 miles away, but they're right here. And they're looking at me, but I kind of believe they're just beaming themselves out there. That they're watching me, but it was still cool to see them, you know, because there was a really big male. It looked like that young one. Oh, and then that's another story. I mean, I mean, sitting inside one day, and I heard a ruckus coming through the garage, and I mean, it was loud. I thought a deer had just come through there and got stuck. Um. And then also my theory, my theory might have been Bigfoot had killed a deer and they're running through there to go to the woods. But, you know, the garage had a door on it, so they would have to open up the door before they could get through there. So I go back out there to see what, what the ruckus was, and I smell candy everywhere. I mean, this candy smell was in the garage. It was all over the yard. Even the dog smelled it. Even, even my wife and daughter could smell it. It was that that strong, and I'm like, where is this candy smell coming from? So I go down to the edge of the woods, and I hear moaning. And um, this is Christmas Eve now, and I hear moaning down there. And um, at first, I think they've killed something, and 
it's back down there dying. That's my first thought. But then I'm sitting in the house and just something comes into my brain telling me the baby being born down there. And um, so I go back down there at nighttime and, you know, um, and I tried to get a picture of him, but, you know, with my cell phone because, you know, I had a flash on it. So I tried to use the flash to try to see him. And that was the mom laid out on another female, you know, exhausted. And the dad sitting there holding the baby up, showing it to me. I mean, that's something. And and then a, a couple of days later, I mean, we was in some of the most brutalest wind. It was so cold. And I'm out there, and I'm out there, and I'm thinking, there's no possible way anything could be out here as cold as it is, and the way the wind was. And I kept hearing something and going, ah, ah, ah. and and what it was, it was they would let me hear that baby. And I, I went inside, I was thinking to myself, do I go out there and bring that baby in the warmth? I said, and save that baby? And I started thinking to myself, no, I better not. I said, they've been doing this stuff for thousands of years. I said, I'm not going to go out there and mess with them. Not a good idea. No. You know, I didn't, I didn't. And and here's the fun part. They went, they came back to me um, telepathically and told me what they named it. It was like Nefertiti. That's what they named it. And Go back into the darn old, old, um, go back in the old, um, um, uh, Egyptian things. And I think there was a Nefertiti in, in the old Egyptian. So they named it. It was like Nefertiti. And, and then, um, they give me the name of the female. I mean, the one that actually is what they, I think she's the general that was, she was the general to the big male. She wasn't with the big male. I mean, it was funny one night I'm out there. I told you about her standing out there with her head turning like this, right? When they were guarding me. I mean, I kid you not, she was, I seen her, her male come out behind her. And I mean, he sneaked out of the woods and I could, I could just stay out there and look because I could see him and she's out there, he's out there behind her humping her <laughs> while she's guarding, watching me, watching over me the place while while he's doing that to her and i was like i i mean it's crazy i mean i went out there one day I, one day and stuff had started getting so evil looking outside and i said why are y'all making everything look so evil why is all these old evil faces and i mean it was creepy it was so evil looking next next night i go back out there and there's a freaking they turned a tree into a mer- I mean, almost like a, a ballerina it was like it was like you could see it. I have got a picture of that too, where the arena standing out there. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, it's like they heard me complaining about the evil. So the th- best thing they could do is give me a ballerina, and they took a tree and made it like it. And I mean, I was able to get a picture of that. But but you know, it, it got to the point with me when I would see them out there, and this is long before he talked to me or whatever, but. I'd see him out there, and um, I'd open the door, and he'd be gone. So one day I said, well, you're going to keep doing this to me. I'm going to go to Walmart, buy the strongest flashlight I can buy, and I'm going to go back, and I'm gonna, when you do it to me this time, I'm going to go in the woods after you. So I did. took my camcorder, and I ran in the woods after him, and then I see him. And they're all hiding behind the tree like I'm some kind of big, mean monster, and they're scared to death, and my heart broke, dude. My heart broke because I was like, what have I done? You know, what have I done? I mean, that's when everything about there was no more trust factor. It was no more. Everything was, you know, I trusted them and I felt so bad about it. I even apologized to them. You know, I was sorry about that because when you see when you see what they really look like and see how scared they was of me. You know, makes you wonder what kind of powers do I actually have? You know, right? Well, and then I go around these ghosts, and look what happened. I mean, we was at we was at this really, really haunted grave site, and um, Stacy's like, um, I'm, I'm, I'll keep getting this feeling. Uh, he said, "You want me to bring the spirit box up there?" So it was up there near this dumpster, and I kept feeling this weird feeling, and. Then the, okay, we get the, we get it on. I said, "Who's out here?" Then all of a sudden, you hear the thing say, "Charles Wayne Wilson." Now, 
what's intelligent enough to know my full name? I mean, what's intelligent to know my full name? I guess this is a demon. And then that freaking thing shut the spirit box off. I mean, it was so mean. And I mean, I, I told him, I said, we're messing with something really, really strong. And when they start knowing your name, you go back and watch the exorcist when that darn thing comes, spits out the full name of that priest. I mean, I mean, it's it's like it kind of had that feeling to me, like I better leave that sucker alone. But I wasn't scared of him, you know. But we sitting in that room, like I said, where that little girl got raped, and we down in the basement of it. And uh, I said, "Who's in here? Who's out? Who's here?" Satan. I said, "Oh, Satan's here." I said, "What's Satan going to do to a God loving man like me?" And I ain't lying. The stuff started moving around the room. <laughs> But nothing happened to me. It just it was mad because it couldn't do nothing to me. And and it all goes back to it all goes back to one thing that I've never got an answer for and I probably never will was I left, you know, I was doing these not just not just you know mind speaking, but I started doing these what they call astro projections or astro projection where I was leaving my body. Um one night I'm one night I'm out, I left my body and I'm walking into this cave. This cave is lined with Bigfoots all around it. I mean, it's like rows and rows of them. And um they walk me in, well, Bigfoot walks me in and he walks me all the way to the end where the like a podium was. There was two elder ones standing there. And to this day I can't remember anything else from it. I woke up and didn't remember nothing else from it. And you know how many times I tried to get them to tell me? They won't tell me. Now, why did they take me in there? And the only thing I can think of is that's when I started. It might be where I got those, got these, got these strong abilities, you know. I mean, I already was psychic, but they may have enhanced it. And I think they did. You know, I think they enhanced it. I mean, I had more, I've had more what I call, um, psychic things happened to me since I've been with the, with the Sasquatch than I ever have with anybody. And, I mean, it's all started with them. I think they enhanced my abilities to where, you know, where now I can go into any place. If it's haunted, I'm going to get a reaction from it. I mean, we're sitting in, sitting in the room trying to get this little girl to talk to us, right? So Stacy's like, I got to go change batteries. So he goes to change the batteries. He leaves soon as he leaves something runs through the house and then the little girl speaks and then then i'm so happy the little girl speaks i go into the other room and then all of a sudden i capture something that i believe was in the room with me that said oh help me help me but it sounded like it was actually in the room it didn't sound like some spirit that i picked up it's like something that was actually had ran through there and said that wow. but i actually got that on audio I took him. I, you, what I would do with my spirit box, I think it's what people should be doing. Take and record it with your cell phone while you're doing it, because the cell phone will pick up anything that that it's almost like a spirit box in itself. But when you play in the spirit box and you record it with the cell phone, it captures every bit of it, you know. But I tell you a funny one. A funny one is uh, a funny one is when. You know, I told you about the area where the Bigfoot's head was, you know, in, in my journey with monsters. But we went, we, you know, I went back there because uh, I thought maybe there's some energy here. So I went back there and turned my spirit box on. I said, hey, is my Bigfoot friend here? And and all of a sudden you hear something say, hold on. And a pause goes away and then you hear, hey, wait. I mean, just as clear as day. <laughs> and I got that. I mean, go to my YouTube page. You can hear it. I mean, it's you hear him clear as day say, hey, way. Now, that ain't a ghost. No ghost is going to do that. But, you know, and that, that was another thing. Uh, um, when I knew they started liking me, I mean, I all they've been saying to me all that time was, hey, hey, you know, but then I walk out there one day and I hear a female yell out, Hey, Wayne. I'm like, they knew my name. They knew my name and they actually called it out. So I believe 
if I went in front of a tribe of them, I believe I've got a connection to them all now. I believe I've got a connection to every one of them. I believe I, I believe that's why I can go to trails and pull out anything that's out there. And it might not be the same thing I originally, you know, had contact with, but I sure still find them. You know, I was in, I had, I think I had went to this trail. I had the worst, I mean, the worst headache and I, and it was sinuses mainly. And I'm walking down that trail and my mind is clear as day. And, um, and, and then you hear all of a sudden you hear, here comes the Sasquatch King. I was like, what? I was like, what in the world was that? I mean, why would they say that? I mean, why would they say that? And I kind of believe now, I believe maybe they manipulated my DNA. Maybe, maybe just, maybe I am, you know, maybe I do have some kind of, you know, you know, maybe I do have something, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but Hey, it's made me a better person, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> You know, I, I have to give you credit because you do go out there and you try to film and you try to pull out evidence, you know, as best you can, and uh, that's that's more than most people do. So, but you know, it's been about two hours and we do have to kind of wrap the show up. I would love. Yeah. To have you. <laughs> I well, to this is a little different. I mean, I, I got another one we did the other day, but we got. I tried to do this in a little different and and approach it a little bit different. You know, I tried to do some of them the different way, but. I mean, I know everybody's heard about my dogs, but I love telling that story because, I mean, nobody else can say their dog hit a Bigfoot. You know, right. nobody else can say that. And and that dog, that dog's crazy. I mean, you, you know we were living in the middle of the city. And because we're living in the middle of the city, and we didn't want to live there. We just didn't have nowhere else we could go and let us have five dogs. So we move into this place, and we start seeing the biggest rats you've ever seen. I mean, these rats, some of them were big as cats. And my my white boxer would catch them and kill them. I mean, she would run and she would stalk them and catch them and kill them. I'm thinking to myself, what is wrong with this dog? This dog didn't have had enough bravery to seen a Bigfoot and lunged at it. And then she's going to turn around and kill these big rats. And I mean, I didn't even have to put no traps out. I just wait for her to kill it. But, but yeah, it was so bad up there. But when you live in living two minutes from a hospital, what you expect, you know, hospitals. Right. Yeah, and that, and that, that, from what I understood, that whole road was dealing with it. But you talk about, you know how many mice or stuff I've had since I've been living here? Zero. So I just tell you, you know, it places corroded with them. And I'm, I am so glad to be, I mean, I mean, living here to me is like a vacation because I'm back to where I want to be. Um, I'm back to where I want to be and I got a beautiful place and I, I swear it's like when you got a beautiful place you want to take care of it and you want to make sure that you know and once all those trees get up like I said you know I should shoot I'll tell anybody they want to come just sit out there and hang out with me and watch and see if we get a Sasquatch you know how cool would that be you know <laughs> But well, you know, uh, hey. I think one day uh, the lost cryptids might make that journey down to where you're at, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun because I kind of did it for that reason. I kind of wanted to, honestly, I wanted to find a place in the middle of nowhere with just a creek or a pond, and just be there with no people around, you know, because that's a better chance for me to have one come out, come out physically out of the woods, but. But if I put those big, if, I, if those big uh, weeping willows are grown up fully and, and there's a blockage there and we're out there at night, there's a good chance one might come out. Because the good thing is the people I move, move, people that live around me don't come out of their house after 11. So if we're sitting out there and something happens, I mean, and the thing is, I got a line of woods there, but behind that wood, line of woods is a road. But then there's 64 acres of woods. I mean, nothing but woods. Nothing been touched. It's just woods. And I've been told I can re I can go walk all of it. You know, just got to figure out when I can do it. You know, maybe, like I said, when the weather gets weather gets weather gets a little bit cooler and and you know, and I and I'm not so busy and uh, you know, I can try to go down there and walk it. I want to go down there and walk it and and see exactly what is there because there's something. 
there what i i've been hearing bigfoots from this i mean from the front i mean from the backyard of that front then the side on the other side is where i'm hearing the dog man from and guess what where i'm hearing the noise from there's a pond back there so there is the, there is there is a water source here and there is stuff here um but you know thank goodness i'm the only one that, that knows what i'm looking for because i don't want everybody out there looking you no, know, no, that's but that's another dude. thing too. They'll be like, you know, you know, they'll be like, hey, this dude's out here in my woods. I need to find what he's doing. But that's why I got the okay. You know. All right, yeah, but I guess we exactly. we get to two hours. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> easily too. It, uh, it yeah. Yeah, uh, it was a great, great, great interview. I would love to have you on again. Uh, definitely do oh shoot yeah anytime anytime i'm anytime i'm trying to get out more i had quit doing interviews but in the last last two weeks i did three so i mean i mean but but like i said night dreams won't night dreams hasn't given me a a good full two hours you know they give me like 30 minutes and you can't get get, you can't get anything across in 30 minutes especially when you talk to me about my food for a half hour you know but right. and look, look, people, people, where did he get all this money? Where did he get? I mean, everybody, I just tell everybody, I tell everybody, don't be concerned about it. I just do that to see what people will say when they see it. And uh, I ain't no different if somebody else goes and gets their two weeks worth of groceries that they've been to the grocery store for and sets it on the table. I just grocery shop different. You know, I buy all my meat and stuff from Costco. That don't mean the rest of it come from there. I don't show pictures of what I buy from Walmart. You ever see anything I say, hey, I got this at Walmart? Nope. I just I just love, you know, I love telling people this is what I found at Costco because who knows when you go in there what you're going to get. You know, today, yeah, today it, I was going in there to get me another ribeye because I had the money. I said, why not get it now while I got the money? So that way, in a couple of weeks, I don't have to work about getting another one. So I'm just going to get it now, and I stock my freezer. Um, exactly. But I walked story. in there. And I, I walked in there, and I saw that big one. I saw that big one that he just put out. I said, "That's mine." So I grabbed it, and I looked at it a while ago. I said, "Oh my goodness! I, this one right here is going to be. These are going to be a little bit thicker and more. Uh, I mean, the last ones look perfect. I mean, when I cut them." But they, these are going to look, I already can tell they're so tender looking already just by looking at them in the pack. So, you, you know, I don't, I'm one of these people. And that's another thing, too. Have you ever heard of anybody that, that believes eating plenty of steak will, will improve your way of life? Because everybody says too much red meat to kill you. I think that's a lie because I've been eating and I get healthier. I don't so, think people get enough I mean, of that, actually. Yeah, shoot. I'm the help. I, I'm the healthiest I've been. Look, at, I mean, look at my shoulders and stuff. I've lost so much weight. Don't, and all I've been doing is going up and down the steps, grilling, you know, just being active. And I've lost weight. And it's, and I think too, it's when you're, when you're, when you're in the stress free and you're happy. I mean, that's the best thing that happens to you, and you get healthier. You know, I'm out of that daggum hole I was living in, and trust me, I stayed stressed in that place because. I mean, it was just horrible living there. I mean, I mean, how'd you like to have a wall in your in your um, bedroom and then have a have a hole in your ceiling in your closet? We looked one day. We looked and we looked and all our clothes were wet. And I and I and I like why? Because it had rained. And I looked and there was a hole up in the roof. And they wouldn't fix it. They wouldn't fix it. The sink was rotten in the inside. I mean. You couldn't, you had to flush the toilet manually because the toilet was so old, I couldn't find a part for it. You know, so it's just when you, when then when you get here and none of those worries are there anymore, I mean, well, you think I'm happy now. <laughs> All like right, your but. journey with monsters uh, really actually did improve your life. And that's, that's a great story to hear. And thank you for sharing all that for this. Uh, oh, hours. yeah, I really don't mind. Hey, I tell you what, too. What I'll find that 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 naked female, and I'll send you a picture of it. And um, yeah, any pictures you got? Yeah, I want to send you that one of that brown Bigfoot too, because that is a, one of the best captures I ever got. And you know what's weird about that 
it's not only got him in it, it's got a ghost in it and a snake. I'm, I, I, I thought I listed the video on YouTube. I said Bigfoot, ghost, and snake all in one. <laughs> I mean, you get a little, you can see the snake. It was a green snake, but you see the snake, you see the ghost, and you see Bigfoot. I mean, and I mean, that one, the, and that female, I mean, when you see this thing, I mean, and you see that humongous rear end, it could not be anything but a Sasquatch because there's nothing else out there. And I appreciate you getting that trail cam picture and showing it because I love talking about that. That's a really, I ain't talked about that in a couple of years, and I'm glad we talked about it because it's a, it's a really, really good um I tell anybody it's on a file I got on my computer and that's a some of the truest form close up of any any you I don't even think honestly, I don't even think you could go up to a bear and get a shot that close. You know? <laughs> Try to get one that I mean, unless it's it's already, you know, in captivity and it's been trained, you know, you could, but let's say you try to get something out in the wild and try to get a picture that close. It's not going to happen. Good luck. I mean, I got it by chance, you know. So. It looks good. It really does. Oh, thank uh, you, bud. I'm well, glad. Talk more about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, it is. yeah well, uh, we're going to end it right there, folks. I know it's uh, we probably go for another hour easily, but uh, we'll have another show for that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. We'll get another show lined up for uh, next week for you guys. I kind of, I kind of want to do. I want to kind of go into kind of detail about the haunted house I lived in, and tell you about all the places I went to where I encountered ghosts. I mean, every place I moved to had a ghost, and then then I get to this one place, and there's Sasquatch and no ghost. You know why? Because they were keeping them away from me, and they and they keep them kept them out of my head. I mean. Man, the th- the abilities these they have are, to me are godlike. I mean, they really are. And 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 you know what they told us? We all have it locked inside of us. We all do, and that means we all share that same DNA. And we all eventually are going to become energy. And when we do, it's going to be the ones like like I said, like us, are going to be the ones that move on and. And go into this new world, basically. You know, I mean, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Even they've told me. I mean, they told me, like I said, we want you to be almost like, and this is not, you hear my, my groups called the Ambassadors of Sasquatch, right? Do you know how that came about? They told me one night they want me and other people to be their ambassadors uh, of them. They wanted, well, that's what they called it. They wanted us to be the ambassadors to talk, go and talk about them and talk and get the word out and open up people's minds and get people awake. That's what they want. And they deemed everybody is, that's why my group's called the ambassadors of Sasquatch. Because anybody that's on there that's doing this research and trying to help get this word out to an ambassador, it ain't just me. You know, it's everybody, including you. You'd be an ambassador because um, here you got me on here. We're talking about this. So, I mean, we all can be ambassadors and we need to be, you know. Yeah. No, all right, it, bud. It thank you again for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're oh, a wonderful guy. Yeah, thank you, too. And like I said, when you get it ready, share this thing. I, I'll, cause people going to want to hear it. I know. <laughs> yeah, it'll be ready to share uh, as soon as I click the end of the button. So. All right. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, okay, you ready for me to leave? Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching the show. We really appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. See you later. Uh- mm-hmm. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.